or reason for bad and doubtful debts. And in this module, we will learn accounting for bad and doubtful debts. We have already discussed its recognition. We have already discussed its measurement. Now, there would be few scenarios we will be discussing in this module and in the upcoming modules through which we will practice that how we can have control on this knowledge of provision for bad and doubtful debts. So, get ready for this practice question. In fact, here we see that a business has trade receivables, which are the debtors, of 75,000 rupees. Among these 75,000 rupees of debtors balance, Mr. A owes rupees 5,000 okay, to the business who has recently been declared as bad, as bankrupt. Okay, So when a customer is bankrupt, what does it mean that you cannot recover bankrupt? Financially out, zero, is bankrupt. Okay, So from that person, you cannot recover your 5,000 rupees. So what will happen? We will pass an accounting entry for bad debts written off. We will write off these debtors from our books of accounts as bad. So these will no more be our assets. Rather will become our expense or loss. So the accounting entry you can see is in fact self-explanatory we are having debtor's account and bad debt's account. We had a balance of 7500 in the debit side. We are reopening it by putting it as balance brought forward in the debit side. So you can see this arrowhead going down. From this 75000 we are taking this 5000 down to bad debt's account. So that our closing balance would be 70,000 and the bad debts of 5,000 will be close to profit and loss account. Here we go. So the accounting entry for debtors written off as bad is bad debts debit and debtors account credit. Well, when we have to recognize provision for doubtful debt, then what accounting entries or how we deal with the ledger accounts this scenario will be discussed for that issue. So in the year one, which is we are considering a start of the entity, trade receivables are 75,000. And 5,000 is to be written off as bad. This is what like we are saying this is the first year, start of the year. Okay. So in this very first year of the business, at the end of this very first year, we see that 75,000 is the closing balance of debtors. And during the year, we have decided that 5,000 are to be bad. So we have to pass this accounting entry as well. And then we decide that provision for doubtful debts is to be maintained for the first time, obviously, equal to 2,000 rupees. Okay? So these information are clear to us. And let's see what accounting we will be doing in terms of debit and credit, how these ledger accounts will be maintained. We are maintaining debtor's account, bad debts account, and provision for doubtful debt account. Well, the debtor's account brought forward balance is 75,000, from which we are taking this 5,000 out and putting it in the bad debts account. Clear? By doing this, this 70,000 is taken as our closing balance. All right. Well, so the concept is that provision is created on the closing balance of debtors after writing off all the bad debts. So the bad debts written off 5,000 credited and then the closing balance for this 70,000 will create provision. So what to do that for the sake of ease, we did not 
give any percentage for calculation of provision. Rather, we are just saying that 2000 is the amount of provision that we have to maintain. Since we have to maintain the balance of provision equal to 2000, we will put this 2000 as carry forward balance of the provision. We have to maintain this here. Since it's a credit nature of account, its carry forward balance will be appearing in the debit side of the T account. Remember this as a tip. And what to do? That this 2000 will be debited to, here we go, bad debts account and credit to the provision account. This accounting entry we know very well. Bad debts debit and provision for doubtful debt credit. So you see it is appearing in the credit side of the provision for doubtful debt and in the debit side of the bad debts. So by doing this, our bad debts account is giving us total of 7000 which we will take to the income statement or profit and loss account. Okay, profit and loss account. This 7000. Closed. Now come to the provision account. This provision account, which was credited with 2000, we are having its closing balance with us 2000. This will be taken to the balance sheet. Okay, this will be taken to the balance sheet, which is also known as statement of financial position where it will be set off against the closing balance of the debtors. That's why we were saying that provision is created against the closing balance of debtor. So closing balance of debtor is taken from here. You can see the arrowhead. And closing balance of provision is taken under this for subtraction. You can see this arrowhead. And the balancing figure 68,000 is the balance of debtor that will be appearing in the face of the balance sheet. So the accounting entries we have already discussed that bad debts debit and debtors account credit and bad debts debit and provision for doubtful debts account credit with 2000. So this is how we account for bad debts and provision as to their accounting entries and as to their ledger accounts. So the important tips that we have to remember, the ITTRs, actual bad debts and estimated doubtful debts, both are debited to bad debts account. Both are debited to bad debts account. We have already discussed, but this is something important to be memorized. ITTR means always remember, okay? And then return off means permanently decreased. Permanently, you have to write off your debtors. So when we are saying permanently, it should be credited within the ledger account. Look for provision balance. We did not credit that in the debtor's ledger account. Whereas for bad debts, we are giving credit in the debtor's ledger account. Means debtor's ledger account is written off with that amount of bad debts. And with the amount of provision for doubtful debts, debtor account is not written off. We just present this as a contra, as a minus item in the balance sheet against the closing balance of debtors. And then provision balance is presented as contra against the debtors. This is what we have discussed. Pretty much clear? Good. Thank you.